Hello and welcome back, Chinwaggers. I'm Stephen Asma, and this is part two of our amazing chat with comedian, writer, and masterful storyteller, Chris Gethard from SF Sketchfest. Uh, Chris uh, is not only all of the above, but also a remarkable podcaster. Check out his beautiful anonymous. It's masterful. And of course, we had to ask Chris during this section if he believes in all this weird paranormal stuff that Paul and I can't get enough of. We, we sort of ask everyone if we can about ghosts and, and uh, hauntings and monsters. And what do you guess? Chris, of course, believes in some of it. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. And he's got some proof, so listen in. Do you believe this stuff? Do you, what do you, like, how do you approach this stuff? Do you sit here and think it's all bullshit? You mean, I would think, knowing you as an incredibly open-hearted person, an open-minded person, you would not say one way or the other particularly, probably. I would say, because I worked, so I worked at Weird New Jersey for five years, and it, when I, to be clear, it was two guys who owned it and me, and that was all, that was the whole <laughs> staff. Really? So I cop every email that came in, I read, I edited every letter. Amazing. Um, you know, did delivered magazines, punched names into the mailing list, just everything. So for five years of my life, all I did all day was read stories like this. And what I oh found God, was that's just heaven, man. Why did you, why the fuck did you job. leave? If I, I was telling you backstage, I got I, that job when I was 19. If I got that job when I was 27, I never would have entered the <laughs> entertainment industry. I would have done that forever, but I was young and hungry and needed to prove myself. And here we are today. Um, but you know what I started to realize was some of it you could read and be like, this person's doing a put on and you could sense it very quickly. Uh -huh. And sometimes you'd get letters from people where you'd go, this person's in a lot of pain uh -huh. yeah. and they're struggling mentally. And, you know, they'll send you a picture of an orb in their kitchen. And then yeah. it also happens to mention that their mom died six weeks ago. And right. you're like, you're in a lot of pain. Yes. But I can say that there are a few stories that I remember reading, uh -huh. couple, two in particular. Please. <laughs> that when I read them, I said, these are so specific and different than anything else that I read that at the very least, I am convinced that something, something happened, happened to this person. Yeah. So I can't be fully skeptical. And even when I am skeptical, I generally tend to think this person believes this because there's something going on with them that right. has rattled them or shook them or caused them pain that they are dealing with. Yeah. So I'm not someone to go. We talk con, a lot condemn. about why somebody needs to, why people need to believe things and why people maybe need to believe things like that. Do you remember any of the specific stories? Oh about? yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's two in particular. They're both long. I'm trying to, you, uh, since, since Bigfoot came up, I'll give you this one. Great. This was <laughs> printed in, I started, uh, I started reading Weird New Jersey with issue eight. I started working for them, I think, with issue 12 or 13. <laughs> this is getting really uh, specific. This one's from issue six, though, which Great. is almost impossible to find. For anybody who out there, I do apologize. Because <laughs> um, it was from their like, real people, fans. People are like writing this down like is it, yeah, <laughs> issue 13. or <laughs> It was this story that I'll, I'll, I'll remember the bullet points. And, and if you do track it down, I'll probably get a few things wrong because I haven't reread it in a while. But it was this amazing story from this guy. And one of my bosses actually grew up with this guy in Essex County, New Jersey. Uh -huh. And this guy was kind of a juvenile delinquent back in the 70s, early 70s. Uh -huh. And apparently New Jersey had a program back then where in the summers, in the cities like Newark and Patterson, if you know Jersey, the cities of Jersey are kind of always tough because you got New York and Philly right there. Yeah. So when the cities get tough, yeah. there's not much money coming in to yeah. recover because it goes yeah. to the bigger cities right yeah. next door. So apparently there was a program that this kid participated in as a teenage juvenile delinquent where they would just scoop up these kids in the summers and they'd say it's hot in the city and you're all out causing trouble and there's nothing for you to do oh, no. and maybe you don't have air conditioning so you're all pissed off. So we're going to send you to go camping way out in the sticks of New Jersey <laughs> and just get you out of here for a while. Just right. like get out for a this while. This should work. Yeah. yeah. And what could kids, go wrong? The kid <laughs> said he was like 14 or 15 years old and it was like him and three or four other notorious juvenile delinquents. <laughs> New Jersey's worst. From the greater Newark metropolitan area. And if you know that history too, there were riots there in 1967. Yeah, it was like, there. Yeah. We were like, let's yeah. get you out oh of here. God. And yeah. But the crazy thing was he said... The person who drove us out there, like we had tents and equipment and um, we figured that person was going to be our chaperone. 
but they just dropped us off. Oh, oh shit. my God. He said they took us to a general <laughs> store and dropped us there. And they're there. city kids. Oh my like, God. And then said, there's the trailhead. Go camp back Holy there and we'll come shit. pick you up here in a week. <laughs> here's your shit. Just go. <laughs> and here's some things I want to put out there. And the next thing I'm going to say is awful. But the reason I'm bringing it up is it's one of the things that you would never include it in a story to lie. He said that when they went to this general store, there was a girl working there. And one of the kids was like, yo, let's try to like lock the door and see if this girl. And, the, and they were like, no, we're not going to take oh. advantage of this girl. Oh. Which, why would you put, you're yeah. not, at this point, you're, you're not releasing trying to trick these me. kids. You are like telling me and, that you thought about, you right. were almost part of something awful where I'm right. like, this is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a, there's a, there's a tree and a girl. Right. There's a ghost of a girl. Like I'm like I've read that a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, the stories yeah, yeah. of that all over the world. The yeah. girl in the white prom dress. I've never heard this. And then goes, so we had packed in our bags. We had booze. We had LSD. We had quaaludes. Jesus we had cocaine. Christ. We had all this shit. We had guns. <laughs> not a crossbow. <laughs> we had a wrist Christ. rock. Just all our juvenile delinquent shit was contraband. <laughs> all our us. juvenile the delinquent kid. shit. So he says yeah. they buy Jesus. a bunch of food and they convince the guy who is like, let's grab the girl to not grab the girl. Good. God, <laughs> and they go off in the woods and they're just kind of camping and walking around back there. And they're shooting their fucking gun off and sh with the wrist rocket. This is the 70s, by the <laughs> yeah. way. Just a reminder. Real 70s yeah. shit. And he Jesus. says they are drunk. They are tripping. Yeah. They're out of their fucking minds and they're <laughs> bored. And here's where it gets real fucked up. He said at some point, with no warning, they came upon this field full of cows. And there was not a farmhouse in sight. And they had gone from woods to all of a sudden this pasture. And there are all these cows. And he says in the article, he goes, I'm not proud of this, uh, but we started fucking with these animals, right, these poor animals. The awesome. And remember, too, he's writing this 20 years later. Yes. And he has grown up a lot and blah, blah, blah. But he says we started fucking with the cows and shooting the wrist rocket at yeah, them and enough. setting off fireworks to freak them out and scare them. Yeah. And um, we were all laughing and it was real sadistic shit I'm not proud of. But he said at some point a bull appeared and it was rightfully pissed off yeah. and trying to protect the cows. And at first we got scared of it, but then it kind of backed off. And he said, uh, he goes, I'm again, not proud of this, but the bull turned away from us. And one of us took, I think he said either the wrist rocket or the crossbow <laughs> and Christ. shot at its testicles and oh, hit them and Jesus. the thing freaked out and got pissed off. And he goes, but then it, what you think is going to happen is I'm going to tell you that the bull turned around and charged us. It didn't. And this is the thing I never forgot. He said, yeah. what happened is that all of the cows turned around in unison and in cow style slow motion <laughs> just started silently walking towards awesome. us all at once. Oh, awesome. As if there was some like psychic signal amongst the cows yeah, of sure. like, fuck these kids, you know? <laughs> awesome. And he said, it was, Revenge. he goes, I know it sounds scarier to have a bull charge at you, but I'm no. telling you, it was so much scarier to have every cow decide to just walk <laughs> at us. And he goes, uh, all the cows started walking. So we started laughing and then we got nervous and yeah. we we're backing away. And then we turned around, we run into the woods and we figure the cows are going to stop at the field, but they don't. They just keep coming. The cows follow awesome. us into the woods. Awesome. And there's oh, all these silent cows <laughs> oh, chase, like That's walking fantastic. through the woods. And then at some point we see an abandoned house. And we go inside the abandoned house and we lock the door and all of the cows circle the house oh my God. and stand there. <laughs> yes. And we realize it's almost as if these cows pushed us to this place. Oh. And he said the cows were standing there. So it rang around the, the house. house. So we were too freaked out and scared to leave. To leave. So we just started walking around this house. And he said it was this old abandoned house in the woods in New Jersey. This is fucking bananas. I know, this is crazy. Oh. Uh, there's more? We're in Act. We're <laughs> solidly into Act 2, but we are not at the Act 2 turn yet. Amazing. So he says they're looking around, waiting for these cows to walk away so they can go. And eventually they get to the attic of the house. And uh, it's obviously very dark in this abandoned house. But as their lights adjust, they can see across the attic that there is an old mattress. Uh, yeah. And there's someone sleeping on it. Oh my and God. as their lights adjust, there's still a few of them making noise who haven't realized, hey, there's someone up here. And 
what they think is a person stirs. Oh my God. And instead of a person, and there's a few specifics, they said, because keep in mind, it was sleeping on a mattress. The guy said, uh, uh, seven to eight foot tall, Bigfoot creature stood up off the mattress <laughs> and it was wearing uh, ripped up jeans and a flannel shirt. <laughs> Which sounds ridiculous, but I will tell you again, when you spend nine to five every day yes, yes. reading stories, the, you read a lot about a Bigfoot. But when you have somebody go, hey, like clothed. we almost sexually assaulted a girl. We abused animals. I'm telling you really awful shit we did. Yeah. And there was a Bigfoot wearing clothes and it was on a fucking mattress in a weird house. It's, it yeah. sounds more it, real. It sounds, yes, you know? it does. Yes. It actually sounds, it sounds more, more believable. Real, yeah. but you Dude, did. I would thought you were going to say a fucking cow got no, up off no. the fucking... I was like, it was a cow! <laughs> he then wrote a very detailed description of how this Bigfoot creature screamed, charged them, and beat the fucking shit out of these kids. Really? They were trying to fight back. They deserved it. He <laughs> said that they were pounding it, getting it to drop it, that they were all fucked up, shot it with the fucking wrist rocket. It brushed it off. He said at one point, one of them ran up and shot it with a 22 pistol. And, and it like threw the guy in, but kept fighting. And then I think that was the thing that eventually it ran off into the woods and they looked out and it ran away and the cows were gone and they just went and sat by the road and waited for the person from the city come to pick them up. up. Come pick and they're all like bleeding and have and confusions. The cows let them come out and got shit. the shit beat out of them by a Bigfoot oh wearing God. Levi's. <laughs> Holy a fucking shit. Big that was oh one I remember. God. That was one. That was one? <laughs> yeah. Holy hey, fucking but- shit. That's <laughs> one of the craziest done. things I've ever heard. If you have time for more, I got more. Yeah, but. let's. But if you want to, hear, let's hear one yeah, more. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's, let's, Chris, my other Chris, favorite Chris, one. This is why I asked you to be yeah. on this, Chris. <laughs> my other favorite weird New Jersey story, and I forget which issue this is in, but you can get it. This one I never. Why found. the fuck don't you remember the issue? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so this guy wrote into us, and he said, uh, "This is a very detailed story." Him and his buddy went to Rutgers, as as did I, and right. many Jersey kids do. Right. Uh, and he said. You know, they lived in New Brunswick for four years, had their own apartments. They had no money. And him and his one buddy just didn't want to move home. Their parents were like, we want you to move home. And they were being stubborn and they were being kind of assholes. They said, we're not going to move home. And they said, but you guys have barely worked. You have no money saved up. They said, we're going to find a place. And your classic, like 22-year-old kids who are like, our parents don't know shit. We'll find a place. Yeah, right. And they start realize, they start looking around. And, and this story, if I remember right, this was in the early 90s or late 80s. Okay. And they said they... The only place that they could find that they could afford was in a town in New Jersey called Nashanik Station, Ooh. which today is a very, very desolate place. Very wow. like farmland spread out. Nashanik Station. All of New Jersey has more condos than it used to, yeah. but it's still pretty that remote. like a Stephen King novel. Yeah. Like, yeah. why would you go there? And it's kind of in the middle of Hunterdon County, uh-huh. which is the very rural. Very rural. Very yeah. quiet. Keeps to itself, Hunterdon yeah. County. And it was he said it was a farmhouse on a hilltop that had a uh, like a spare cottage type thing that they were willing to rent and they went and met this guy and one of the details i never forgot he said one of the first things that happened he said okay like that house over there is rented to some other people don't bother them <laughs> and then there was this area in between that maybe had some sort of storage area or barn and he wound up cutting through the barn with them on the way to their cottage and one thing that they saw in that walk through that storage area was a refrigerator on its side locked with chains and a padlock. Oh, Jesus. And the guy just very quickly was like, and um, never ever try to open it. And then they just kept walking. And they were like, what the fuck? So they showed him this little place and it was in the middle of nowhere and a kind of creepy thing. But they were like, we don't want to move home. Fuck it. So they move in and these two guys are there and they have girlfriends. They're like, we got our own place. Whatever, man. Screw our parents. And he said, he was like, you know, we had all our decorations from our college house. So we're putting up the lava lamps and the posters with thumbtacks and no frames. <laughs> right. And one of the things that we always had in our college house was that one of us from a biology lab stole a jar with uh, formaldehyde and a frog. Okay. Me. All right. Just a frog. And we put okay. that on our coffee table sure. and everybody As would come does, by would yeah. be like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> you know, like kids would get high and be like, what the fuck is up with the frog? <laughs> it was, it was frog. Yeah. And okay. we just put that on our coffee table like we had it at our college house and whatever. And he said, within days, we just quickly realized 
something was extraordinarily wrong in this house. Uh huh. And he said, um, you know, he'd go to get dishes and just all the dishes would be gone. And he'd go to his wow. roommate and say, where's all the dishes? And he'd go, what are you talking about? He'd be like, literally <laughs> every dish gone, is just man. gone. Right. And we'd wake up and we'd have horrible headaches. My girlfriend would wake uh, up and her nose would just be oh randomly bleeding. Uh-huh. And um, you know, all sorts of stories like this. We would hear uh, pounding on the walls. That's just everything you can think of was yeah. happening. So and haunted he, is what is the right, some poltergeist, version of, weird of poltergeist yeah, haunted. Right. Uh-huh. And he goes, and very quickly into it, one day I walk into the living room and the jar of formaldehyde is there. <laughs> no frog. Come on. <laughs> frog is just gone. Oh, oh shit. Oh, and the frog's God. wandering around the house. Uh, probably. The frog is gone. Uh, jar of formaldehyde still oh, there. Fuck. And it goes on from there where he's like, so my roommate's girlfriend saw this and had a dream about this. Uh, and she refuses to ever come over again. <laughs> and then my girlfriend is like bleeding from her nose and wakes up and says... Uh, like she went to the bathroom and in the, the frog is in there. Oh, right? We'll get to it. And, <laughs> and my girlfriend refuses to stay there. Right. And then, Oh no. Oh, the, his girlfriend. That was one of the best parts. I almost forgot. He goes, um, we were living there. I think, like I said, late eighties, he goes, but the place had the super thick shag carpet from the seventies <laughs> oh, yeah. and a super heavy wooden farmhouse door. And he goes to open that door and get it over that shag carpet. You had to like, <laughs> like, like linebacker line drill yeah, that yeah, motherfucker, yeah. like <laughs> football, like yeah, put yeah, your really shoulder into it and push it back. over that carpet. <laughs> yeah. And he said he, his girl, his um, buddy's girlfriend wouldn't stay there. His roommate was not home one night. Him and his girlfriend were watching TV. Oh. And he said it was so hot in the farmhouse that they had the door wide open yeah. with this thick Giant shag. Giant 70s. Oh, here yeah. we go. And I he can says, see it. I can see it too. <laughs> brutally hot. You know, the Northeast, sure, one of these yeah. nights where it's sticky like hot. sticky hot, yeah. no wind, no yeah. air movement movement just sweating sitting on their couch watching tv and the door just goes <laughs> oh, yeah awesome. and the girlfriend just stood up and was like i'm never staying in <laughs> yeah, yeah. and drove away uh, right so he's there his buddy's girlfriend has left his girlfriend <laughs> says i'm never coming back here his buddy is not there that night and he's like he's gone half the nights anyway because he's so freaked out and i realize i'm being really fucking stubborn Right. I got to go stay at my parents' house. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, this really, is crazy. Right. Yeah. So he calls his friend and his friend comes back the next day, says, I'm with you. I was trying to figure out how to tell you we need to get out of here. Sure. Brings a bunch of boxes. They're throwing all their stuff in there to get out of there. And he says, we're finding stuff in place. It's stuff that's oh, been missing no. for a while. You're finding the place. This and that. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we find the wow, place. Nice. And they're in this closet we never opened. Sure. And, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh-huh. and he goes, and one of the last things I did was I went to go get under our sink where we had all the cleaning supplies and stuff. Oh, and I'm okay. throwing them all in a box. <laughs> and I reach in the back and I feel something wet. <laughs> oh, and he goes, you'll not be shocked to hear <laughs> that what he pulled out was the frog. But what you will be shocked to hear <laughs> was, again, the specific that makes me go, yes. I don't think you're lying. Yes. He goes, I'm holding the frog in my hand. And whoever put it back there had taken a pencil and shoved it through its mouth and out of its asshole oh, and oh impaled the frog God. on a pencil. Oh and I just dropped it, picked up the box, walked out, and never, ever, ever <laughs> stepped foot in that oh place again. So you hear something like you that did. and you're like... You lived through something, you know? <laughs> something happened. Absolutely. There. I will say this. For yeah. as much as I am I am a skeptic who does believe on some level, yeah. I will also say in working this job, my encounters with other humans yeah. have been by far more treacherous and dangerous than anything supernatural encountered. And I have yes. been in some situation, I have been held on that job. I was held at gunpoint sure, uh, um, by a man in the basement of an abandoned home for troubled boys. Uh-huh. Uh, we heard foot- the nightmare of footsteps above our heads as we were in the basement. We were like, what? And a guy came down here with a gun. Right. And he said, I'm I'm I know the owner of this place and you ain't him. What are you doing here? And he's pointing right. a shotgun wow. at me. Right. And my boss said, Hey, whatever laws we're breaking, trespassing, I'm pretty sure you're breaking more of them by threatening to <laughs> shoot this nineteen year old kid. Right. So maybe we just walk away yeah. and don't come back and we call it any yeah. sit get the fuck out of yeah. here. Like yeah. been held at gunpoint. I had one situation where I went to explore a place called Buttonwoods in New Jersey. Uh-huh. Which was this very it was, I, 
this area. It, it's if you've ever been to Jersey, do you know the Willowbrook Mall? It's a yeah, very totally. populated area. It's Absolutely. about an eight minute drive uh-huh. from the Willowbrook Mall. Is this area? is a very fascinating thing where a river shifted over time. Yes, that's right. Yes. So the movement of the river, it used to be that this one neighborhood was zoned in... in, in how do I want to explain it? Basically, there's a part of a town that's on the other side of a river. Yes. So the police don't bother driving all the way over these bridges over the river to patrol it. So there's like an area where it's like within the town of Lincoln Park, but it's actually Wayne's jurisdiction oh, because yeah. the river shifted. Right. And there's people living back there in shacks and tents and and some ramshackle houses. And we went back to explore there and a guy cornered us and told me he was going to have sex with me. He told me that. And we got in a car chase to get with him. And then we started, (laughs) we published that. And we started getting letters from dozens of people that were like, yeah, he chased me too. We got a letter from a cop that said, a cop who said, this guy was so fucking nasty. He was the largest human being I've ever said. And he had a lump on his head. All of his hair was white. (laughs) And then he had a lump on his head and the hair growing out of that was black. (laughs) And a a cop wrote wrote us and said, I once arrested him and that man was so physically strong that he just flexed and broke the handcuffs. Oh my God. A wow. cop wrote us and said that. Okay, how did you get out of that? Just real quick. What I was drove that? my car out. Like he okay. said, he basically, it's a long story, but he basically <laughs> said, I'm going to have sex. He was rambling and yelling at us and I, right. I calmed him down. And then his other guy in the car had been kind of like hiding his face and in the truck and he whispered right. something to the guy and the guy started laughing and he's like, yeah. And I was like, what's up, man? And we're cornered. There's a river behind us. There's swamp on both sides. He's in a pickup truck. I was driving. This was the early 2000s. I was driving a 1986 Chevy Celebrity Good for you. that I bought from a man with nine fingers. <laughs> this is true. From a World War II veteran who had nine fingers. Of course. So I'm driving this like old man car that's like <laughs> on its last legs. Swamp on both sides. I don't know how deep it is. The river's right behind us. The guy whispers to him and the big guy goes, yeah, let's do it. And I go, wait, let's do what, man? And he goes, I'm going to have sex with you now. Uh-huh. And I go, no, you're not. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to give you $20 and then I'm going to have sex with you, which was such <laughs> an odd. Lord. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to turn around and be like, oh, $20. <laughs> yeah, wait a yeah, second. You're like, wait. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, buried on the, the other lead. Hand, yeah, you buried absolutely. the lead. Yeah, exactly. So at that point, I was like, Were I you just like, I'm just here to investigate the frog with the pencil and his ass under the sink, sir. That's all I'm- he had, He told us, we because a lot of those houses were marked for demolition from a hurricane. Yeah. That, and he was like, you've been back here stealing stuff. I'm like, we're just taking pictures, man. We're just right, looking we're around. We're just here to, yeah. He didn't care. So at that point, I was like, I don't know if this swamp is six inches of mud or three and a half feet of water. I don't know. Uh, right. But yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to drive just into go. it. See, and luckily yeah. it was closer to oh six God. inches of mud. And then he chased us. Your, your whole life is like a Tom Waits song. It's just this <laughs> okay. hard scrabble, like dark characters attacking it. <laughs> but uh, it is interesting, though, that you know, man is the far scarier oh, beast. Yeah, than one I, I thousand agree. Absolutely. The weirder, one the more like unknowable, the more mysterious, the more fucked yeah. up, the more like bizarre. Man is good enough. And that's yeah. eight minutes from the Willowbrook Mall. Yeah, right. They yeah. got like an Auntie Anne's pretzels in there. It's like <laughs> eight <laughs> minutes away. An orange away. Julius, it's for Christ's sake. For real. They got a GameStop. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's civilization eight, eight minutes away. Eight minutes away from that. And I might <laughs> die in a swamp, man. <laughs> totally. God, I, and people wonder why I love New Jersey, <laughs> you know? I hope yeah. that was okay. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing because that, Great. no, it's like, it's so fascinating what I, I was just going to say, what's really cool about the fucking menacing cow story is that it's like, it sounds like a weird fairy tale. You know what yeah. I mean? It yeah. sounds like the every step of it begins to sound like some weird medieval Grimm's fairy tale. Yeah. And then, you know, young hands shot the bull in the nuts with a, with a, with his crossbow. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and it's, it's really strange how yeah. it has the features of like a fairy tale. It's so odd. Yeah. It's really cool. I would also just say, since I did effectively just recount my times with Weird New Jersey, if you're not familiar, those books are great. You can also go to their website, weirdnj.com, and just order old issues of that magazine. Yeah. And even if you're not from Jersey, but you like these stories, it's dozens packed. of issues Amazing. packed with shit like this. And so these kinds them. of things, like the, they is still the cow do all story themselves. in there? Yeah, that, I'm not sure. Well, you're that, right. You said actually issue six, which yeah, is hard to Yeah, that find. one I think is out of print, but <laughs> like uh-huh. they still put it out and it's still full of all Ong's hat. You guys would love Ong's hat. <laughs> How did we not talk about Ong's hat? Uh, go ahead. I mean, what, it's Ong's a, hat? It, what is it quickly? What is Ong's hat? No, it, it, people think it maybe started as like an early- Is this early, New Jersey? 
Yeah, in the Pine Barrens, which is where uh-huh. the Jersey yeah, Devil also lives. Very weird. Oh, the yeah. Jersey Devil. So there is this story that some scientists from Princeton were doing some like research, building these eggs that could maybe travel between dimensions. <laughs> and Princeton pulled maybe. their funding, and they and set they're up doing a, this in the pine woods of Jersey. Well, it's like Princeton pulled their funding, yes, okay, so they Princeton, set up like sure. an underground, sort of like Stranger Things style, uh-huh. like which that all ties into the Montauk Project, which I wrote about for weird. Uh, the New Montauk York. Project is Dude, freaky. I saw yes. Stranger Things, and within two episodes. So I, I was, was like, like you've ripped off the Montauk, the Montauk yeah, project. I said the same thing. My friend John Reynolds plays one of the cops on there. I was yeah. like, did you guys dude. know? He was like, dude, the pilot was called Montauk first. Oh, like, oh, so they knew. Okay. Like yeah, that. I they think they give it credit. Did. Montauk but, project is a whole weird sort of, the, of interdimensional uh, UFO thing happening on Long Island of all places. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah. That's another one. So a whole other thing. Ong's hat, one of the really fascinating things is they think it started as before the internet when it was like BBS systems and Usenet groups that it started as like an online role playing game on the proto internet that some people that the internet was new enough oh. technology oh, I, that yeah, people okay. did not understand it was a game and thought it was real reports. Yes. So there are some people that swear by it There's and others a, that say it's a game that got out of control and became an urban fascinating. legend. Fascinating. That's fucking crazy. There's so much cool. I feel shit. like there's a couple of things like that that have this sort of idea behind them that they started as a game, that they're not an actual thing. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> then you get into the cicada project stuff. You know about oh, that, right? Fucking God, no. What is the cicada <laughs> the project? Cicada project. Some people no, I don't probably think, don't. Holy God, fuck. You need issue 13. Think, <laughs> by the way, have you heard about the weird cicada thing that's about to happen? No. What? These guys How seem fucking to be... crazy is that? What is it? Oh, dude, we're going to get attacked by like gazillions of cicadas any minute now. It's like, well, we've been asking for it for a while. We have been asking for it for a while. There's a, I didn't know there is, there are in, in the country, in the, in, in our, our beautiful country, there is a northern brood of cicadas and a southern brood of cicadas. Oh, oh right. And they are, and they don't come out at the same they time. They don't come out right. at the same time, but they are now, they are about to come out at the same time. Oh, really? And so we're buckle be, up, motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's going to get bad. It's, what's the cicada project? That is an internet <laughs> game that was pretty huge on Reddit and some uh-huh. similar sites like that. But some people here in San Francisco definitely know about this. <laughs> where it was a code breaking game, but where people would realize, like, oh, they want us to like fly to Chile to yes. scan a QR code on a light pole in Santiago. Yes. And, oh, yeah. about this. and there's yeah. all this stuff, and some of it's online and some of it's real world. But everyone who has taken it to a certain level just stops talking about it and stops interacting. And there's a lot of rumors that it's Do actually... Do they vanish? Do they like, are they like... No, there's a lot of rumors that it may actually be a government recruitment project to see who's oh, good enough... Who's smart oh, enough to like... To get yeah. to a certain level, at which point the NSA or CIA oh, or somebody so is saying, we go. come right. with us, please. Makes that's sense. interesting. That Which the, I feel like sense. that I love that yeah. that one played in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, totally. Like, totally. Oh, we were just playing a game until the government came <laughs> yeah. and got us, man. <laughs> we were just trying to have some yeah, fun, hey, man. man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a big deal, man. <laughs> wow. Well, this has been amazing. Oh, this has so been fun, truly man. amazing. Thank if you, you want to, by hours. the way, just so everybody knows, you see, do I have this right here? If everybody, if people want to follow, see Chris live, what can they, well, how do they find out, Oh, Chris? you can go to chrisgeth.com. Chrisgeth.com. I, I go on the road a lot. Very yeah. good. Great. If you want to see Chris do more of this amazing conversating. Well, thank you very much, guys. This was awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Chris. That was amazing. Chris Gethard is a remarkable storyteller and a great comedian, and he's got a fantastic podcast, Beautiful Anonymous. We had the best time at SF Sketchfest, and you've got to go next year. And don't forget to check out chrisgeth.com to go see Chris live on tour. He's remarkable. And in just two days, we'll be back with more from our favorite medium and yours, Teresa Caputo. If you can believe it, we actually had more questions for Ms. Caputo, and she patiently answered them. Check out our bonus wag this Friday with the Long Island medium herself, Teresa Caputo. Wag on, weirdos. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Treefort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Original theme music by Luke Top, with additional music by Via Mardo. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Audio production supervision by Matt Dyson. Editing and mixing by Jeff Neal. 
Animation created by Alex Sokol. Research assistance by Aiden Brooks. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod.